Today I'm going to be showing you five easy exercises for recovering from foot drop. These exercises are meant for the beginners or people just beginning their foot drop recovery and not for people who are in later stages of recovery. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button or leave us comments and questions below. And if you don't want to miss any of our other videos, please click the subscription button or the logo in the bottom corner of the screen at any time. Okay, let's get started. Foot drop is caused by the weakness or paralysis of three main muscles on the front of the leg that help lift the toes and foot up off the ground towards your shin. Those muscles are the anterior tibialis, which is the most commonly familiar muscle because it sits superficial and right next to your tibia, your shin bone. The extensor digitorum longus, which lifts four of your toes, and then the extensor hallucis longus, which lifts your big toe. Today, we're going to be focusing on strengthening those muscles so that you can help or begin helping your foot come off the ground. One other thing I need to address is that some people have soft tissue shortening, which means that the muscles and tendons have adapted to the foot being down for a while, and or spasticity, and that needs to be addressed. Spasticity and or the soft tissue shortening are caused in three muscles on the back of the foot that helps point your toe. Those are called the gastrocnemius, or that big calf muscle you see when people stand on their toes, or uh, from football, soccer, baseball, anybody that runs and jumps a lot, you see that big calf muscle. You also have a long muscle that, that sits on the backside of the tibia called your soleus, and that, that with the gastrocnemius makes up your Achilles tendon. You also have a very thin muscle that approximately 10% of the population doesn't even have called the plantaris, and that plays a small part in pointing the foot to the ground as well. The first exercise today is going to be stretching out the muscles on the back of your calf. And the reason that is, is because stretching is going to help permanently lengthen the muscles on the back of the leg. Also, stretching in short term shows uh, a reduction in spasticity, which will allow you to work on some of your exercises. If you have soft tissue, or if you have spasticity, you need to make sure that you are stretching throughout all of your exercises so that it doesn't increase. If you start to feel like the muscles on the back of your leg are cramping or tightening, and your toes are starting to point, and it's harder and harder to do your exercise, make sure that you stop and stretch out those muscles again to bring that spasticity back to a very low level. So you can continue. One of the first things you want to do is stretch your calf, okay? That's going to help with either reducing the spasticity that you have or any of that soft tissue shortening from your foot being in a pointed position for an extended period of time. You can use anything from a bed sheet to a gate belt. Um, you could use a yoga strap or a therapy strap that has all of the different loops in it. You could use a cane to lift up your foot. I have one of these bed helpers or a leg lifter on hand, so I'm going to use that today just for convenience. I'm going to extend my affected leg, and then I'm going to put this underneath my toes, or sort of on the ball of my foot would be a little bit better. And then I'm going to pull it up so that the toes are coming towards my shin. Make sure that you have your legs straight. If you can only come this high and you feel a stretch on the back of your calf, that's okay. You're going to get better over time. One key factor to stretching is making sure that you stretch for a long period of time. Most people will stretch until they're like, it just feels good, maybe 10, 15 seconds. You can do that, but that only works for a very short period of time. What we're hoping to do is permanently lengthen your tissues, your muscle, your tendons. So you need to hold it for a minute, two minutes. Um, it just depends on, on what your situation is. You also need to make sure that you're looking for the reduction in spasticity if you have it. This will happen. You'll start to see your foot creep up as you give tension. My suggestion is do not work on the no pain, no gain type theory. When you stretch, you want to stretch to where you feel a bit of a stretch, but not in pain. Otherwise, your body will work against you. When you hit that point, hold it there. Take nice deep breaths and relax. Let the muscle stretch. If it becomes too easy, lift up and stretch even farther. If that's too easy and you can't pull any closer to you, then you can lean forward a little bit to get a stretch on the back of the hamstrings as well as you should feel it a little more in your calf. 
Your next exercise is going to be bringing your foot up off the ground into dorsiflexion. We're going to be helping or assisting that foot to do the full range of motion since I know that those muscles are pretty weak or you're having some issues. So today I'm going to choose to use a cane, but you could use a strap or, or a gait belt, a sheet, whatever you would like. What I need to do is use the handle, put it on the ground, have my foot outstretched, and get it underneath the toes. Then I want to think in my mind, lift up that foot, lift up that foot. If you have control of it, you're going to see the foot come up. Maybe not this high, but you're going to see the foot come up. And what this is acting like is a therapist's hand helping assist your foot through that full range of motion. So as you come up, give it a little bit of assistance, but make sure that you're working those muscles. If you pull too much or give too much assistance, it's not helping you. Uh, at least it's not helping with the strengthening part of what you're doing. It could be helping with range of motion. But lift your foot and then use the cane or whatever device to help bring the foot up, 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 up. Now one thing I want to mention too is there's a certain pattern that helps with positioning when you're doing exercises, at least for lifting your foot. And that is going to be having your knee bent as well as having your hip bent. With having your knee bent, you're actually putting the muscles on the back of your leg on slack, which allows your ankle to move easier. But this, this neurological pattern of having your hip and your knee bent will assist you in being able to perform exercises on your ankle. So if you're having issues with your leg straight out, you're probably going to want to bring it a little bit closer and, and or even up to here, just as long as you're lifting. Just remember that the closer your foot comes underneath your knee, the more you're going to be fighting gravity. So if you can do it with your leg out like this, you're fighting less gravity, but you might be fighting more tone. If you're doing it in here, you're going to be fighting a lot of gravity, but probably a lot less tone. Another exercise is, is doing the same thing as the last one, but helping your foot all the way into that final position of dorsiflexion and then assisting it from dropping back to the ground. That's called an eccentric contraction. It's almost like doing a pull-up it's where you jump up above the pull-up bar and then you slowly fight gravity trying to hold yourself there as you go down. It's the second stage in working your muscles. And so if you work the dorsiflexion and then eccentrically work that dorsiflexion, you're doing two different exercises that are going to help you. So you take, again, the handle of a cane or a yoga strap, a bed buddy or leg lifter, a gait belt, towel, etc. Put it underneath your foot. And then bring it all the way up as far as it'll go. And then if you can, take it out and try to hold it there. And as you fatigue, it'll slowly go down. That's if you have that strength. If not, you have to judge how much resistance. So keep trying in your mind, keep saying, I need to hold it, 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 hold it. But in reality, the foot is going to be dropping slowly back towards the ground and you're just giving resistance with whatever you're using to help lift the foot to slow that descent so that you keep working those muscles. Another exercise you can do is just using resistance from gravity and or from something like a cane or something straight. When you're in the beginning stages of your recovery, you're going to be very, very weak in the muscles that lift the foot. So I would suggest getting that broken pattern where you have the hip and the knee bent a little bit and just trying to lift your toes and your foot up off the ground. But if you have the ability to do that already and you're still in that, that beginning phase, use the handle of a cane or something that's not sharp but something that can add resistance to your foot. The beginning resistance would be just lay it on top of it and then see if you can overcome whatever that couple ounces or a few ounces of weight is. The next thing would be to give it a little bit of resistance. I'm using two fingers and I'm pushing down just a little bit and I'm fighting the resistance of that slight. In later stages of recovery you would definitely put your weight over it and really try to resist yourself as you're lifting your foot. We're not there yet but I hope you will be soon. For this exercise I've put masking tape on the ground. This is just regular masking tape I picked up from a local hardware store. 
and I've painted the top half of an analog uh, clock. Like 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. The point of this is to put your foot at 12 o'clock and try to get to all the different dashes. So in the beginning, you might not be able to even get your foot off the ground. This might be too advanced, but still try it because you might find out that you have some of that ability. Plus, you'll be working some other muscles at the same time, which will help you in the long run. As a therapist, I always say set short-term goals. But you want to set short-term goals that are attainable. They might just be right outside your reach. That's sort of my sweet spot or, or the, the focus of where I, I, I do my short-term goals. I want somebody who can do 70%, 60% of that goal right now so that they can achieve it. Because who wants to work towards a goal that you never get or it's going to take you three months to get to and that's the only goal you have? Forget it. Short, attainable goals. So if I'm starting out, I would say go from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock. If you can barely lift your foot off the ground, try to go from 12 to one quarter of the distance between the two. Get to that point. Be successful. Then go to one o'clock or 11 o'clock. Then as you progress, skip to two hour jumps, like 12 to two o'clock or one o'clock to three o'clock. And then as you really progress into the later stages of your recovery, you can do all sorts of things. You can do multiple movements. You can do big jumps like nine o'clock all the way to three o'clock. Um, you could be doing repetitions of an exercise and then do that motion. You could add in weight on top of your foot or your ankle or uh, resistance bands or have some type of thing like the cane pushing against it so that you can add in all of those different um, characteristics to make your progress continue but also give yourself um, that bit of struggle so it's not too easy that you don't make any progress. I want to thank you for joining me today on discussing five easy exercises to begin your recovery from foot drop or drop foot. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button or leave comments and questions below. And